So by 2000, we had four or five years of data. We were really starting to figure out what can we do with this data? What do we look at? Uh, in this slide, we show uh, hybrid performance based on soil test. So we were starting to do some multi-dimensional you know, layering, uh, trying to figure out what makes yield. Is it a soil test? Is it a hybrid? Is it a, an elevation? What is it? Uh, this is also in the very early days of computing. We didn't have a lot of power. We could do some printouts. We could look at stuff. And a lot of it was just my mental uh, knowing agronomy and yeah, this makes sense. This could be something. Uh, just trying to figure it out. But we had to build that story to get enough data to build confidence in what we were seeing. Next slide, please. So by uh, 2000, again, by 2000, we were starting to incorporate our data from a financial side too. We, we looked at all the aspects on every farm and on every field, what the cost of production was, uh, were we making money on that field? As I said, a lot of our land is leased. So we, we were trying to see where our profit was coming from. Was it a field or was it a farm? Was there certain farms that were losing money? Uh, eventually what we found out was that even if a farm didn't make money this year, it could make money next year. It could be a weather event, it could be hybrid selection. Uh, a lot of things went into it, but we needed to get multi years of data to really have confidence in the profitability, just like in any other thing that we found out from data. So, next slide, please. <clears throat> so, now fast forwarding <coughs> to uh, say 2012 to 15, we moved into the, the digital space when the iPads came out. Uh, wireless data transfer, everything started flowing from the machines to the cloud. So at that point, uh, life got a lot easier. We weren't moving USBs, uh, moving data, we were trying to uh, you know, assemble data to make sense of what was going on. This stuff was all flowing to the cloud, so we were capturing everything. It was, it was a great time. But what do we do with this data? I, at that time, I had 15 years of data that I really wasn't doing much with. We were trying to look at it, but say in my operation, we're 5,000 acres, 2,500 acres of corn. I've got 10 different hybrids that I'm planning for variability for not knowing which one is gonna work that year. Plus I've got maybe 10 different soil types. So you can see by the device, division there, I've got maybe a hundred different combinations. While I'm a sizable operation, my data is kind of small. And then it's one year's worth of data. So 2013, we were approached by a company called Farmers Business Network about being part of that, contributing data. Uh, and the idea was to share our data with other farmers of like situations and I was all over that because the idea that we could share data and build a bigger data set so that we can learn faster, that was a real selling point to me. Uh, I wanted to learn faster. I wanted to see bigger acres. I wanted to move from a variety of soil type on my operation of 40 or 60 acres to maybe 4,000 or 10,000 acres so that I had confidence in my decisions. So, we, we moved through that time. Uh, the first couple of years were really great as being part of uh, Farmers Business Network because most of the people that were contributing data were like-minded, <clears throat> a little bit anal. We made sure that our data was correct. Uh, that's a situation that you find a lot of guys just collect data, but it may not be accurate. <laughs> but at that time, most all of the data was really good and we we found that data to be a value when we combined it with others uh i made many decisions based on that data uh in say 14 15 uh 2014 15 we were learning a lot faster now the downsides as that company grew they were getting contributions of data from everybody 
so the data became somewhat diluted uh, in a sense that uh, it may not be as good that we're just getting data to get numbers. So that's one thing to be cautious of. And then I look at the data. Uh, in, in my own operation, you know, I know where I'm at. I know where the profitability is. And when I look at this combined data, I know where kind of where everything sits. So in the early days, when I was combined or comparing myself to peers that were very good. I was kind of an average farmer. So there was equal number better and equal number worse than me. As we got more and more data into the system, I became a much better farmer because we had more poorer farmers. So I was at the 80th and 90th percentile in, in data standards and, and where I set, you know, as a producer. So I took a bit of caution in that because while it made me feel good that I was doing that good compared to everybody else, I was also showing them what the potential was. So from an operational standpoint and a competitive standpoint, I was showing my, my competition what they could achieve. So a little bit, a little bit nervous about that. Uh, we're still participating in it, but a little bit uh, more muted, if you will. And that's for my uh, independent uh, agronomy data sourcing company. If I look at the other data sourcing companies uh, that we worked with, uh, we were a big player with climate in the FieldView platform when it came out in 2012. I was a very early adopter of that. A fantastic system because it uh, was very frictionless. It allowed us to capture data very easy either through the field view drive or, or different methods and get it to a cloud. Uh, but the agenda behind that data, uh, it was a company that was using that data, maybe, I shouldn't say against us, but they were figuring out what we were doing on the farm to uh, price their products, whatever it might be. So while it was a great data platform, I suspect a little bit of what was going on on the backside. Now we come to John Deere, I would say that in the Midwest, uh, John Deere is very prominent. Uh, most of us are using Operations Center uh, because it's a very easy system. Uh, the, the data all flows. I can look at my iPhone. I can see where any tractor is at. I can see how much fuel is in it. Uh, it's just a fantastic system. But again, John Deere is getting all that data too in, in their cloud. Uh, where that goes, I cannot compare that with any other farmers, but I look at it on the backside and look at what you know John Deere could be doing with that data. So, from a machine standpoint, uh, they could be learning the optimization of machines, whether it's a computer software running a diesel engine or whatever. They can learn from many more uh, metrics across the across the country of performance. But on the uh, agronomy data side, you know, whether they look at it, whether they don't, I'm not sure. But if they look at you know, machines that they sell, uh, can they find better performance from certain machines than others? Uh, can they set us up to uh, you know, market those machines to us? Uh, the you know, methods of, of pricing the machine based on what we get done with it. Uh, a, a lot of complexities there. So while sharing data is great, I love it. We also have to look, have to look at the other side to see what the uh, implications are. So uh, my message is not to be naive about that and just uh, keep thinking about it in a bigger aspect. Uh, next slide, please. So again, our operation is corn and soy. Uh, we're collecting data continuously throughout the year. Uh, we've even got weather you know, stations and weather records. So we've collected everything that uh, makes up yield. You know, everything that happens in the field it, it is part of that story book that makes up yield. Uh, we've even found where you know, a tillage practice two years ago affected your yield this year. That's something I may not remember if it was in a longhand notebook, but since it's digital, we can go back and look at it and reference it. So 
I'm a, I'm a very big proponent of digital lag and the things we can learn from it. I'm just cautious on the data sharing. I think there's a great value in data sharing. Uh, just need to be cautious about it and, and kind of go in by eyes wide open and be aware of, of all aspects of it. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so, as I said, I'm located uh, just outside of Chicago, kind of in the middle of the Midwest. Um, if uh, anybody wants to contact me, I'm on Twitter, the Pitstick Farms. Uh, I think we've got time now for questions. Uh, anything's fair game, whatever you want to ask. Okay. Um, yeah, Steve, thank you. Uh, here at Kodak Emrath, we just had a talk three weeks ago. Uh, we are in an audience with about uh, 40 people. Uh, thanks for sharing your history on digitalization of your farm and also the lessons learned. Um, I look to the audience. Is that a question for Steve that someone was asking? I see one. I come at you to you with the mic. Then hopefully Steve can hear it very well. Hello, Steve. It's, it's an angry life. We met during the uh, jury of the Agro of the Year Award. Um, do you have an example at hand? Can you quantify um, the benefit of the data you had in, in, in money on a certain field, a certain year, a certain crop? Yes. In the, in the very early days, uh, we saw specific hybrid performance on a certain soil type. Uh, when we combined that data with everybody, we saw the same results. So we were able to move forward with confidence to be able to plant this certain hybrid and focus on that certain soil type uh, to get the performance that we were desiring uh, and ha have the confidence to do it based on you know, tons of data, not just what I was seeing myself. Thank you. Are there more questions for Steve? I see another one. Hear it? It's yours. Uh, Steve, thank you for your presentation. Very interesting. And um, I must say, you were introduced by uh, by Anton with a very raging um, uh, 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 story about uh, about the, uh, the the farmers' business uh, uh, community. Um, how do you look at the future for uh, for this uh, community, uh, given that it's uh, it's uh, going to the uh, to the stock market? Um, who do you think uh, can buy it, will buy it, and what effect will that have on uh, the farmers using it? Also, uh, with uh, uh, keeping in mind the, the comments you have on uh, uh, on the, the ownership of the data there. Yeah, where Farmers Business Network goes as a company, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I can look at it as they, they kind of have turned into what they started out being against. They were against big retailers, but now they've in, in the states they've become a retailer of uh, of chemicals. From the data side. Uh, the data is good. Where that goes, if it's sold, uh, I'm not sure. Some of the, you know, as I look at my data, yes, it's my data, but there's so many things that go into it that you know, I'm not doing. There's an evolution of the data, I guess I would say. So, you know, I, somebody could have my data from three, four, five years ago. We're doing so many things different now than what we were then. The, that recipe, if you will, of what I did or what my outcomes were back then really aren't relevant any longer. We're changing our system continuously. So while I'm sensitive to data, who gets my data, who does what, um, I'm not really worried about it. I'm cautious, but I'm not worried. Okay, thank you. Is there an other question I see then there. So I'll come to you. Okay. 
Hello, Steve. Thank you for your interesting presentation. Um, you, you were discussing actually the differences in, in data. So first of all, there was a small group and everybody was taking a lot of caution in making sure their data was right. So has the Farmers Defense, uh, farm, farmers defense Network, no, the Farmers <laughs> Business Network, excuse me, has the, has the Farmers Business Network actually been able to provide you with certain standards which can help you but also the others to make sure that your data is actually comparable? Uh, to a certain degree, but I think what has happened is the, the machines have gotten better over time, so the data just naturally gets better. Uh, there's less human interaction in it. Uh, we've got, you know, uh, on our one machine, we have a yield sense monitor from precision planting, uh, very, very accurate. Uh, I think that those systems are being adopted across the uh, farm spectrum, so I have more confidence that the data is accurate. Uh, in the very beginning, early days, you know, there was a lot of tweaking. Uh, because of the machines, these are add-on features to the machine. So as the machines are built around this data capture, I think we'll naturally just get to a better level. Uh, one of the things that I've you know, talked about with them is you know, looking at data, you know, there's a calibration factor in every machine. Um, you should be able to, through big data, see what that calibration factor is and see if everybody's within a, you know, standard range, if you will. If somebody's an outlier, you might disregard that data because it's it's off. So uh, machine metrics, things like that, I think we can get to a better uh, standard by looking at some of the things in the background. Uh, to build confidence in that data quality. Okay, thank you.